All right. Um, before we created an SVG um, element inside of our JS6 code, so I want to extend a little bit more about that and kind of show you some of the pitfalls and the options that you have. So if you open up again that hello SVG example we created, let's do this. First, I want to simplify it. Um, let's take out, out of the equation the D3 um, method we created. So we're just using straightforward JSX. So I'm going to take all that code and I'm going to leave it. Let me clean it up. I'm taking the D3, taking out the state, the properties. We don't need to pass any properties. We don't need any reference. I just want a pure J6 code. And I want to show you a couple of options. Okay. Now the app, let's change it. So we're including our um, hello um, SVG component. There you go. And we need to make sure it compiles. So if I go back and compile, everything looks good. Um, one thing that I want to show you is that if you can see here, we programmatically change the attribute of the rectangle to be green. But um, a common way of doing that, and it's actually better. So when we um, start creating our charts, a good way of doing it is just extracting that into a CSS or a SAS file. And that way the code is more clean and we can make changes, visual, small visual changes into our um, CSS file or SAS file instead of doing it um, inside of the code. You know, this way when we work with other developers, they can change it easily. So how are we going to do that? Um, let's say, let's create a class. Let's call it my React. And inside of it, we can change the fill. I got a fill color for us, BA2121. That's a hex uh, color of red. And what we're going to do here, I'm going to get rid of the fill. And then what I'm going to be doing is just attach the class name into my rectangle. So in my rectangle, we're just going to use class name, my rectangle. Save that. We don't need all of those. You see, ESLint is complaining because we're not using all that stuff. And now when we're going to go back here, here we are. We have, you know, the fill using CSS. So, you know, this is just another option. And, you know, you do it probably with HTML. But, um, you know, this is the recommended way of doing it. This way we can, um, you know, we kind of separate the concern. Um, another thing I want to show you is that um, you know when it comes to the transform you see we're using the transform here the transform um, API um, has a lot of method and a lot of things we can do with it and I want to show you one example if you go into um, the mozilla.org you can see they're giving us an example of using the transform to do more than just adjusting the um, the size of the component you can do something like rotate we can skew that, we can scale, we can even create a path around our um, component or on our element that um, and use that um, using X-Link. But this is really a good example because the JSX, it's not exactly one-to-one -one with HTML. So even though the React team tried to kind of mimic that as much as possible, there are certain things that it doesn't work and that's just a good example. So if I would take this example from here, from the um, Mozilla doc, let's copy that, and I and I'll try to use that in our code. Let's see what happened. All right. So if I try to take the Mozilla example and just paste it into um, our SVG tag, and um, let's do it here. So I'm going to replace the SVG with the one I just took from Mozilla. Okay, actually I'm missing the SVG, so let's put it inside of our SVG. Okay, so we got an SVG, we got a group, and then look what happened. It's complaining that the X-Link is not assignable, meaning the React JSX doesn't know what's X-Link. So this is just a great example how things are going to break for you because React is not exactly HTML. 
and that's a gr really great il illustration how that happened and if I want to get this thing to work what I need to do is, is um, you know we can still use the X link but we're gonna have to do something else what we need to do is we need to create an SVG tag so here I'm gonna create another SVG tag and we need to use the dangerously um, set inner HTML that attribute it's called dangerous because you should really use it if you know what you're doing. What it means is that they're kind of trying to warn us that if we're not careful of the script we're putting in here, it can cause security issues with our code. Um, here what we're going to be doing is we're going to attach um, a use tag of xlink and we're going to attach it um, using binding into the SVG and that will do exactly what we see uh, been done with the code. So if we just attach the the binding and then we're going to use the same um, fill and the same stroke. So let's do that. So now we don't need the x-link. The only thing we need to do is um, at the um, we need to define um, our um, use tag. So here what we're going to do is we're going to create a constant. We're going to call it use tag and that's going to equal that use xlink and the type is going to be h reference and we're referencing the heart that we defined you see that path that's the path of the heart so we set it up like that and then we bind it with underscore underscore html and of type the use tag we define and that should do it so if we go back to our example here we go so we got a heart shape using the path and we're using the x-link to create that shadow behind it 